While getting ready for rehearsal one evening, I noticed one channel of the PA was much quieter than the other. I checked all the cables, all the connections, I even tried adjusting the outputs, but the result was still the same. Something was wrong with my power amplifier. Now these things are expensive and I'd rather not buy a new one. So can I figure out what's wrong with this thing? Let's give it a try. The QSC RMX series of amplifiers were introduced around 2006, which is when I purchased this unit. The RMX 1450 puts out 450 watts of power into two 4 ohm speakers and 1400 watts when run in bridged mono mode. I use this one to drive the mid and high range speakers in a bi-amped PA system, so when one channel began to act up, it was very noticeable. To test the unit on the bench, I strapped the two inputs together so both channels would receive the same signal. I then attached a function generator to the input so I could inject a 1 kHz test signal through the amp. Using some spare wire and attaching them to the binding posts, I made extensions for the speaker outputs so I could attach an oscilloscope in order to monitor and compare the signal output. I taped the extension pairs down so there was no probability of them touching and shorting out. <laughs> Why risk making more of a problem? With everything attached, I fired up the amp, the scope, as well as the function generator, setting the last to output a 1 kHz sine wave at an amplitude of 1 volt. Turning up channel 1 to about 1 quarter power, I can see the sine wave output on the scope. When I turn up channel 2, however, it's evident that there's an issue here. Where channel 1 is roughly doubling the output, channel 2 supplies only a small amplification. In fact, even with channel 2 turned to maximum, its output is about half of that of channel 1. So I guess I now have a visual representation of what my ear has already told me. What to do next? Well, take it apart and see what's in there. At this point, I should take a moment to remind everyone that working with and disassembling items that use mains power, in other words, stuff you plug into a wall outlet, can be quite dangerous. If you're not comfortable with working around potentially lethal voltages, you should not open items like this. Power amps in particular contain components that store a lot of energy, even when unplugged from the wall. If you touch the wrong thing, it can hurt you. For now, enjoy the music as I get rid of some of these pesky screws. Let's see what's inside this beast. Very clean layout. The left section is the AC power supply with a large toroidal transformer, while the main area is dominated by the transistor section, channel 1 and channel 2, as well as a large aluminum heat sink that the output transistors are attached to. Since the bad channel did pass some signal, I thought I'd start by checking the two channel potentiometers and make sure they were reading a proper value. You can see that they're rated at 2.5k ohms, and that's about what I got for each of them. I noticed the area around the fan was very dirty as well as a lot of furry junk in and around all the components, so I thought I'd clean things up while I had it apart. Although the actual tunnel inside the heatsink looks pretty clean, the entrance and exit were pretty nasty. A quick look at the transistors shows some fuzzy collection, but other than that, not seeing anything that looks damaged or otherwise out of place. With a vacuum cleaner, a small brush, and some paper towels, I give you an accelerated cleaning for your viewing pleasure.
If you're interested, I'll leave links to some of the tools I'm using for this adventure in the description below. With the unit cleaned up a bit, I decided to reinstall the fan so it would be available to provide cooling while running tests and troubleshooting. Fortunately, I remembered to attach that ground strap between the fan shroud and the fan. Now, I'm not certain why call it a premonition, but after cleaning, I felt I should check the output of the unit again. I fired up the amp, brought up the signal on channel 1, then on channel 2. To my surprise, the channels matched. The issue seems to be resolved. When I placed the signals on top of each other, they matched exactly, even at multiple output levels. Things are not usually this easy. Seems like my lucky day. I was under a time crunch because I needed this amp working for that night's rehearsal. Being a bit cautiously optimistic, I put the top back on and tested it again. Same result, still working. Just to try something different, I injected the function generator signal one at a time into each channel using the quarter inch jack input. Same result, the signal was being amplified properly. I had an hour drive ahead of me and 45 minutes to do it in, so I decided, good enough, packed up, and took off. Well, that was over a year ago, and the amp's been working great ever since. So what was the fix? Was it just dirty? Lack of airflow? Maybe the potentiometer was dirty and corrected itself with all the messing around with it? Or maybe it's something more sinister, like a bad solder joint that's just waiting to fail again. I really don't know, but I'm curious to hear what you think. If you've had similar experiences or just a theory, let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested to hear what you have to say. I guess the bottom line is, for whatever reason, that was a success. Until next time, I'm Maine Jason. Get out there and give it a try. <laughs>